about everybody. Let's just keep it rolling. I'll catch up with you in a couple minutes. And thanks for watching Boss Life Outdoors. So we've bounced around a couple days here, opening week. We're in day four. I'm actually going in on my first morning sit. It's about 4.30. I just put the dogs out. I'm going to scoot across here and go sit in the swamp where these birds have been heading to. And the hens have been nesting. Now, the gobblers, they're flying straight off the roost and their head is straight down. They're not stopping for anything. They're hend up pretty bad. So I'm going to try to outflank them and see what we can bump into on a self-filmed. This segment brought to you by Uncle Pete's Wingbone Calls.
should have shot at those three that came in. Kicking myself a little bit right now for it. Self filming. I did have it on camera, so hindsight. We're only halfway through first week of the season here. So never know. I'll take my chances. We got plenty of tags. There was a lot of birds. So sit here for a little while longer. See if they come back through. They should. But I'm not going to stay here too much longer just so they don't get an education because that was a lot of birds over there. So next time I come in here it might just be an ambush. I might not bring anything with just for the simple fact that they're here. I had two or three behind me in the swamp. At least a, at least a dozen. Headed off to the east here. Eight gobblers for sure. If not more. A couple of hot hens in there. That's all it takes. So welcome to Boss Life Outdoors, where you're going to see some of the best turkey calls made by the finest custom call makers from around the country, as well as a Boss Life Outdoor gear apparel, and some of the gear that I'm even using when I'm out chasing turkeys, and other things in the outdoors as well. So the majority of what you're going to see is turkey hunting, but we're also going to share with you what we're doing when we're not turkey hunting. So on this hunt, as you can see, it's a first, I couldn't think of a better way to kick off first episode with my very first bird with a 410. Yes, I passed up those gobblers yesterday to grab the 410, brought the 12 gauge along just in case, and I brought some old school retro decoys that yes, you, you'll get a kick out of. But uh, I use those for winter turkey hunting, which we'll get to later. And I went after it. So let's pick up where we left off. This segment brought to you by Roostum Game Calls.
Jeff Foxworthy here to tell you about an exciting new product called the Buck Cage. The Buck Cage provides a quick and easy no mess solution for scent dispersal. Simply add half an ounce of your preferred scent and insert the dispenser. Within minutes, the polymer beads go to work absorbing the scent and are ready to dispense it for weeks at your favorite hunting location. The Buck Cage is redneck approved and ready to help you cage your next buck. Get your Buck Cage and refill packs at buckcage.com. with Boss Life Outdoor Gear. Let me present to you the Easy Cut Wow Saw. Let me run down the features for you. It has a curved 10 inch blade that is taper ground. It's chrome plated SK4 steel. It has raker gaps that clear the debris out of the channel and keep the blade cool and the teeth are impulse hardened. Another feature of the Wow Saw, it has a ballistic rubber handle that keeps its grip even when it's wet. Lastly, it has a super durable metal lock which locks on the close and on the open. Watch in comparison to traditional folding saws, which cut on the push-pull. One, two, three, four, five, six. The wow saw cuts on the drawback. One, two, three. Easy cut wow saw. Get yours today. This segment brought to you by Big Game Gut Glove. cell phone coming in here this morning. <laughs> I gotta go find it. <clears throat> that was crazy. This bird is the wind. <laughs> 
bearded head off to my left here. I dropped her with a 410 on a management property, damage control. Oh, that's a first for me. I'm pretty jacked. I'm just shaking. It's like buck fever all over. Oh, man. That's every bit of, oh, goodness, 20, 25 yards. I wasn't sure. first you just keep pulling them off this is just crazy you never know what's gonna happen in turkey hunting folks oh wow i'm just shaking that's awesome right here check it out Three inch beard. This 410 did a number on it. 25 yards. So this morning is a continuation of yesterday on this spot across the swamp here where I sat yesterday morning. I passed up three gobblers that came in and a lot of people on social media asked me why did I do so. Well, there, what you didn't get to see was there was a boatload of birds straight across from me, about 300, 325 yards. So I picked out a pine tree that I wanted to sit in this morning. And I went in there last night, so I wasn't going to make a lot of noise, and set up all my stuff. I came in this morning and grabbed my clippers and my pruners, and I went to town early I was up at three and over there that way it gave plenty of time for anything to settle down clipped everything got it clear very brushy in there so from there had a few birds gobbling off the roost um, dark 30 didn't really want to call much which I did um, just to let them know I was there so I hit the box call, I hit the slate call, I hit the wing bone call, and uh, gave them a tandem to sound like there was multiple birds in the area. So from that point, I had no idea what was going to come in. I brought the 410 just in case. Um, it's on my bucket list, one of those to-dos. Um, yeah, it was uh, intense. So I had the three and a half inch with just in case they were a little bit out of range so what ends up happening is I hear these birds early this is all very early and it sounds like they're headed the opposite direction from where I'm at I could hear some hens yesterday it didn't happen till 9 9 30 when they really started getting active so I was ready to sit at that point we're on a property that we are doing damage control as well so we have a green light on anything that's illegal as far as if it's got a beard in the state of Wisconsin, it's a legal bird. I'm taking it. So straight away, it's quiet. I had a deer come in. This bird flies in straight out of the tree, right off the roost. So there's no, without question, it worked. At that point, I'm froze underneath this big pine tree so the next thing that happens is I got the 410 in my lap then the three and a half inches off to my side the camera's not on 
So I have to wait for her to slowly do her thing, and she was watching hard. Well, little did I know, <laughs> I had my neck gator on inside out in the dark. I had no idea. So, good thing I didn't move. Again, movement will catch you every time. At this point, I get the camera on, I got it on her, and I got to move to grab this gun that's sitting in my lap. So, not knowing that she had a beard at that time, suddenly I saw the beard and was like, okay, this is totally going to rock if I get this bird with this 410. So I'm going to try it with the 410 since there was no gobblers in the area. And I posed the question on social media a couple weeks back, knowing that I was going to do the 410 on shy, uh, shot size. And what to, if anybody else said out there had, had experience, because this is a first for me. You know, it, it, it was definitely something I wanted to do, wanted to try. Um, score with happened to be a beard 10 for my very first 410 harvest. Awesome. I was shaking. <laughs> she comes in and she starts to come at me. At this point, I'm going to take her as soon as she turns her head. And it happened. I, I really speechless still at this point. It, it's, it hasn't sunk in yet. It was very quick. Um, it's still early now, but uh, I'm very pleased it can be done. This bird, every bit of 25 yards with a 410, three inch, six shot. So for those out there that want to give it a go, do so. It is intense. This is one heck of a way to kick it off for me uh, on a first hen, bearded hen with a 410. I'm giddy as golly gumdrops can be. It's just awesome. So, you know, anytime you can get a chance to do something different, new, unique, do so. Um, just, you know, we are hunting farm properties that we're doing damage control on as well so there's you know a management issue there it's not always about a trophy 